Bradley J. You're gonna call up Bradley J now. Hello? Mm, and tell him why you're right. Hello? Who is calling? Can you hear me? Yep. Everybody's calling. The fever is high. This is now your chance to discourse and more. Thank you. We're trying to have a conversation. Yeah, Jay's got his problems and he's got desires. But you got a few of your own. WBZ News Radio 1030. WBZ 32 degrees. Nasty, really. Is the word. A little mist coming down here in the city, but if you're out where it uh, is a little colder, that mist hits the ground, especially on bridges and freezes. I imagine it's real treacherous. 617 254 1030. I uh, had grown up thinking the earth was round-ish, but it turns out that may not be the case. According to Mark Sargent. Hi, Mark. How are you? <laughs> I'm well, Bradley. How are you? I am well. First, you need to promise me that you're serious and you're not, you know, this is not satire. This is for real. You you believe it and... If, 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 I'm punk, if I'm punking you, I've been doing it for the last two years. <laughs> if you punk me, it's it's a first a mortal sin to punk talk show host the special penalties, the special places in hell for people who punk talk show hosts. So I'm sure you wouldn't ever do that. All right, no, tell, me about no. you, tell me about you. Oh, a uh, little, little biography. I grew up in Seattle, Washington, actually just north on a little island called Whidbey Island. And I started my career playing video games for a living, believe it or not, out in Boulder, Colorado, which is an odd place to do it, but there was some game companies out there. And then transitioned over and trained pro- proprietary software. I did. I trained people on proprietary software for about 20 years. And then and during that whole time, I was in a whole bunch of conspiracies. You know, looked at it a lot of. If you're heavy into tech, you're gonna run into a lot of weird things on the internet. Had thought I had seen it all, and all of a sudden, I ran it. I, I looked in the last book on the shelf, the the one conspiracy that that nobody wants to look at because it's absolutely ridiculous. Everyone hates it which is flat earth, you know, the thing that we supposedly settled 500 years ago. And I go, okay, fine, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at this dumb thing. And I looked at this thing from a guy from Germany who said, you know, the flights in the Southern Hemisphere, they're all screwed up and they only make sense on a flat earth. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then another guy uh, from Montreal, Canada, who said he was an artist who worked for NASA, who, who was told during uh, some thing in the Hamptons, he's going, look, the GPS doesn't work in the Antarctic and doesn't work really anywhere because the world is flat. I was going, okay, this sounds like a great movie of the week, Twilight Zone type of episode thing. And so, but it's a piece of crap. Everyone knows Flat Earth is ridiculous. And I apologize to the listeners out there because I know this is a news show. But, you know, there's, it's going to, people are going to get upset. And if you open up the phone lines, there's going to be some people out there who are going to get really freaked out about this. Well, okay, we'll, uh, 617-254-1030. If you have a question for Mark Sargent, who says and can show and writes on the notion that the earth is flat. Yeah. So uh, your software, was that uh, related in any way, the proprietary software to your... No, no, it wasn't. It was, uh, it was time and attendance software. Uh-huh. And so it was, it was, it's hard stuff, but what it did was it allowed me, cause it, it was not, it's not easy to train people on time and attendance software. Cause you're training a lot of, of blue collar people in software that was not designed by, by blue collar people. And when I did that, I, I, I developed a knack for breaking down complex subjects into easy to digest pieces. So when I looked at this thing and I looked at this, I believe me, this is not something I was woke up overnight and said, this flat earth is the greatest thing ever. I thought it was, I thought it was awful. I thought it was the, it is, it's the worst conspiracy of all time. And so I hammered on this thing for nine months and from the middle of 2014 all the way to the, the beginning of 2015. And that's when I flipped. I, I, I went completely the other direction. I said, you know what? I'm not sure it's a globe. I don't think I can prove it's a globe, as a matter of fact, at this point. So I'm going to make a series of videos. And so I did. It was called Flat Earth Clues. And I put it out on YouTube, put it out on the internet. I basically was a challenge to everybody. And I said, tell me how I'm wrong. And I, I didn't use really any math. I just connected some dots here and there, made, made some assumptions. And, but I, but I, what I really did was I treated it like a, like a court case. I said, okay, 
Flat Earth is, you know, is is the underdog here, and on the other side of the of the courtroom, you've got you've got the space program and and all the science behind it, and, and okay, the burden of proof is on them. So what I'm trying to do is create reasonable the doubt. Burden of proof is on them. Oh yeah, the proof of, the the burden of proof is is on science here because there should be mountains of it, and that's where everybody gets into trouble. Everyone Wouldn't the burden of proof be on you with, with zero science. Not at all. Again, 500 years. You should. At scientists should be able to prove to me within two seconds, which is why the flat earth thing is growing so quickly is because right. everyone starts out the same way. And that is everyone thinks like me, believe me, I'm not okay. a crazy person. I okay. said, okay, I should be able to shut this down. I, I should go to the NASA archives. I should go to any science book and there'd be something there to the silver bullet to shoot this thing down. And it wasn't there. In fact, there was so there, we assume a lot of things, but there is such an absence of data on, especially with the space program side, that finally I, I just again put it. I put the, the the things out there. Put a it was started out as a seven part series and turned into like an eleven or twelve part series. And not only did nobody contact me to shoot it down because I really honestly thought that some university professor was going to write me or send me something anonymously and blow this thing out of the water. Not only did that not happen, the opposite happened, which was all of a sudden I had subject matter experts from all members of the armed forces, surveyors, pilots, air traffic controllers, you name it. Every, everybody came forward to me, you know, and they, some of them were anonymous, some of them weren't. They said, you're talking something that, that really resonates with me. Nobody recanted their testimonies. I've got 20 testimony experts so far. Uh, nobody came out against them. You would have thought, especially with Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, that somebody would have come out against them. They didn't do it. And then all of a sudden the interviews started coming in and pff, interview after interview. And then a publisher out of London say, hey, we want to turn it into a book. Let's turn it into apps. Let's make some websites. And it's, I'm just, at this point, I'm along for the ride. I never, never thought in a million years that uh, it would generate the momentum it did. But it's really resonated with a lot of people. And so... Uh, all right. I'm going to take a break now. And then after the break, maybe you can give us some evidence. Sure. And we'll certainly take calls. 617-254-1030. Do you have a question? I'm sure that you are questioning the notion. Question it out loud. at 617-254-1030. WBZ News Radio 1030. Chain Talking with Bradley J. Man, like this needs to be listened to. WBZ News Radio 1030. WBZ and Mark Sargent, he's a flat earth theorist. And he actually has videos you can Google and find them on YouTube. And they're called Flat Earth Clues. Now, let's get to some evidence. There sure. must be, even though, if as you say, the burden of proof is on science because you say after 500 years there ought to be some and you don't see much you must have some evidence to support a flat earth yeah yeah yep. i mean quite a quite a bit of it was not involved with my clues again i i put the initial clues were was really connecting the doubt was connecting the dots and putting doubt in every space program and general astrophysics but what started evolving, and let's start with the small one because anyone can test this, was the actual curvature. And people came at me right away because, again, I did not do a clue on this. And they said, you know, we can't find a curvature anywhere. Meaning if the curvature, and this is made, you know, we don't make up the math on this. We're just using straight up wiki mainstream science stuff, which is eight inches per mile squared. If, if it's eight inches per mile squared, that means that it's eight inches times every mile times itself. So, you know, two miles is two times two, which is four times eight is 32 inches, three times three times nine is 72 and so on. Cause you know, it's not a slope. It has to get more and more severe until it goes completely vertical. And you're thinking, okay, what's your point? The point is when you get out towards a certain distance, like say 50 miles, you're, you know, several thousand feet, uh, you know, uh, worth of curvature. And yet we can see just about any object that we want. You say, well, you know, you're, you're talking about refraction or it's a mirage or superior mirage, but nothing's inverted. And what's really changed over the last few years, especially inverted, uh, meaning inverted uh, uh, superior mirage w generally would be upside down. So okay. if, if, if you see a ship in the distance, it would be upside down. And what we're seeing is the exact opposite. As a matter of fact, the camera technology has really gotten uh, very, very much advanced in the, in the last few years. 
to where you see a ship go over the horizon. This is the, the oldest argument there ever is. You see a ship go off in the horizon yeah. and supposedly goes off the other edge. Well, fine, but if that's the case, why when we take a, a, a great you know, zoom lens, why can we bring that ship back into frame so easily? In fact, the zooms now, which are extreme, you know, 70, 100 power, can bring a ship back into frame that should be way, way over the curve. Uh, I'll, yeah, but I'll, I'll, you know, it hasn't sunk down at all. I mean, you can't see any no, like, no, 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 mast or something. No, no. As I'll, I'll go, I'll go. So let's because I don't know how much time I have. The, you have the, a long time. Okay, <laughs> the the Navy guy that I interviewed uh, from the United States Navy, who was a uh, Sparrow missile com- uh, trainer for the last ten years. He was the one of the, he was one of the first subject matter ex- experts that called me. He goes, you know, there's a couple interesting things. One, he's going, we can see with our night vision, and he goes, night vision does not lie. He goes, we can see ships that should be way beyond the curve. But he goes, but beyond that, he goes, we're hitting things with a two inch beam radar. He goes, we're not bouncing off the stratosphere or anything like that. We're using a two inch beam radar. And we're hitting targets at 50 nautical miles, which is about 60 statute miles, you know, land miles. He goes, we're going point to point, and this is ship to ship. We're not, we're not talking about huge elevations going down to ship. He goes, he goes, we have to hit our targets accurately. Basically, we're, they're laser painting a target, the old laser painting system. And he goes, that shouldn't be possible. He goes, 60 miles, that ship should be 2,000 feet on the other side of the hill, on the other side of the curvature. And he goes, we hit it every time. And then he goes, he goes one step further. He goes, he goes, not only that, he's going, the Coriolis effect, otherwise known as the spinning of the earth, isn't taken into account in any of our firing solutions at all. It, it, it's, it was Does just, it need to be if the gun's going the same speed as the target? Well, th- that's just it. If the, if the earth is spinning, any, sh- any, in fact, it's weird because you'll see this in mainstream news. Mainstream news will say, oh, yeah, sniper had to adjust for the curvature or the spinning of the earth, the Coriolis effect. And yet I've interviewed artillery guys, tank guys, missile, submarine, you know, because submarine torpedoes can go 25, 30 miles. Most people don't that, don't know that. You have to take that into account. And nobody does. Everybody's heard about it, but nobody actually uses it. Uh, and I kept hearing the same thing over and over with different subject matter experts, the surveyors. Perfect example, uh, two types of surveyors in the world. One is a planar surveyor, one is a geodetic surveyor. Planar surveyors, hence the name plane, you can look this up, this is not secret information, treat every project like the world is absolutely flat. And the, the, one of the guys that called in, he, he, he asked me, he goes, he goes, you know what? He said, he goes, you'd think that people would would account for the curvature of the earth eventually especially you know on a, on a planar project but that's never ever the case he goes we we talk about it in the beginning we say well don't you have to count for the curvature and all the all the senior guys say no don't worry about it everyone says they've heard about it but no one uses it in their nine to five jobs nobody nobody does right. so, so the anyway first, the, the curvature yeah, of the earth is probably the biggest one Right now. Well, there are some obvious questions you get all the time, so I'm sure you have an answer for it. What about when you're up in the space shuttle and spacewalking and the Earth looks round? <laughs> yeah, well, and, I mean, I, and again, I, I we have we haven't yet begun to fight. That's just the, that's just the yeah, yeah, yeah. Part. The unfortunately, the space program is the is the first thing that go, comes into question. Not only, and again, I know this is going to upset Americans. Uh, I'm an American, you know, but bleed red, white, and blue. But I, I hate to be the first one. But the space program, you're going to have to give up on. Uh, not only what, not only is, is NASA was were were the moon missions a, a complete fabrication from day one because they have to be. The the entire reason NASA was created in 1958 was to keep this thing a longer secret than it should have been. And you know, I, I I'll go to the grave with that one because it's everything you we we've we've seen every NASA all the NASA footage we've looked at everything from Apollo to Mercury to Gemini to the ISS everything we've looked at is just has aged horribly, and the production value is terrible. Uh, I, I, there's so many examples we don't have time to go through them all, uh, but if you want to look up if you want to look up one that re- meaning the quality of the film. I, How does that not not just not just quality of film, but the techniques used. I'll give you a perfect example. Look up ISS hairspray. 
if you ever get a chance, and that is we all know what people look like in the uh, zero G simulators, like the vomit comet. Yeah. Which you, with, you know, hair flows, women's hair flows naturally. But the ISS, for a number of years, they've been changing it just recently. When you're in the ISS, the women's hair is permed like the, like the bride of Frankenstein. From a production standpoint, that's the last option you would choose. If you wanted to hide a woman's hair, the, the flowing of it to, to make sure, because you know, in the ISS, there's no gravity shifts. It's supposed to be super smooth sailing. Then there's three things you can do. One, you can cut your hair really short. Two, you can put a hat on it. I don't know, a NASA hat would be nice. Three, pull it back. But no, they permed it up. And it was very rigid and it was very, very obvious. And they did this for a number of years with different women and it drove everybody insane. It didn't, it didn't make any damn sense. Women's hair in zero gravity flows like you're in a swimming pool. And you don't want to show that because if there's any sort of jolt, basically what we're saying is the ISS, the footage in the ISS is completely being done with a combination of the zero G simulators, which is, I think using a DC. With ISS. Oh, International Space Station. Okay. Inter International Space Station. That's where you see most of the footage nowadays anyway. Uh, you want to look up some interesting stuff. Here, here's one for you. Look up on the NASA website a little video they made for television called Orion Trial by Fire. And I'm going to be jumping around a little bit. Where you go there and they're talking about Orion is the Mars program, which is supposedly going to come down. Not, not the SpaceX version of the Mars program, but the NASA version of the Mars program. And they're saying, oh, yeah, we're working on capsules, but the first capsules are going to be unmanned because we haven't figured out how to get through the Van Allen radiation belts. And you got to stop right there and say, okay, wh what are you talking about? You, you haven't gotten through the Van Allen radiation belts. You got through them in the 60s. Supposedly, Apollo 8 all the way through Apollo 17 made round trip through the Van, Van Allen radiation belts, announced in 1959 as this deadly band of radiation, 60,000 miles th thick, that supposedly people will die if they go through. Nobody died, round trip, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody got cancer, and yet if you go to NASA and you say, what shielding did you use to get through it? They will say, they will, you'll just hear crickets. And there's only two types of metal that can block radiation. We all know what they are. There's lead, which you use at the dentist's office, you wear that heavy lead thing, and gold, which is twice as dense as lead. They, they won't talk about it. They won't, they've changed, NASA has changed all their touchdown procedures to where all the capsules that are coming back from space, if you believe that, are all landing now in Russia so they can control the airspace. Nothing lands in the ocean anymore. All the space... All right. What's the motivation for oh, those, that's perpetrating easy. a round Earth? Okay, area? okay. Well, well let, we, we still haven't even really defined the model yet because we're, okay. we're kind of going out of the history. And that is, what I'm saying is, if, if, you, if you're old enough to remember the 1998 movie The Truman Show with Jim Carrey. Yep. Okay, or, you know, or Under the Dome, or, you know, there's a bunch of different movies, or Dark City, or the, different movies, but Truman Show is probably the best example. If we were living in a giant version of the Truman Show, meaning the Truman Show was maybe, what, 20 miles wide, it cost like a billion dollars, supposedly, if you believe the story. If there was a technology out there, not us, that could build a structure big enough to hold an entire civilization, could you keep them from knowing? That's the motivation. So, for example, let's say science introduces the heliocentric model, otherwise known as the solar system model, back 500 years ago. But yet there was no way to literally prove it because you couldn't get high enough to see it until the, until the late 1950s. Let's say you were wrong. The blow to the scientific community, I mean, there's different factors, that, the different things that would happen, but the blow to the scientific community would be devastating. Astrophysics and astronomy would be shut down overnight. Every other physical science, and take your pick, geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, anything with an ology next to it, would have to be rewritten literally from the ground up because the, and, and science's credibility would unfortunately be in, in real dire straits. It, they're so the was same. science, all science fake? No, no, not at all. In fact, most people, let me take it one step further. So it's not that all science knows this and not, not all science fake. It's not like NASA and all the other space programs that are tied to it yeah. know anything about this. This thing is so big that it, it took very, very little to hide it. All you had to do was hide the outer edge of this snow globe and the upper edge. And they did that simultaneously in the same year in 1959. 
And by that, I mean, if it was a snow globe, the first thing you would do, you know, once you found out for sure, let's say you got high enough to, in a rocket and all of a sudden look down, it's like, holy smokes, it's not a globe. What are we going to do? So you what know, would, you, uh, sorry, who are the operators of the Truman Show in which the solar system well, you're, you're, you're jumping, you're, you're cutting to the chase quick. Yeah, well, you know. No, no, it's okay. The The operators of the Truman Show, take your pick. I, I don't want to be arrogant enough to say that what's out there is, is the handprint of God, necessarily. Although, if 80% of the world is tied to one of the, ma the big five religions, you know, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity, then they are going to look at it in that way. Right. So. If, is it, one, another question, even if there was a, a set up universe in a fishbowl kind of thing, yeah. why why not have the it be round? Why would the why would even oh why why the Truman why, Show? Why would that mean the Earth is flat? Oh, because it's way more efficient. It, because it's what we do now. If All you right. believe if you believe that art imitates life and life imitates life, this is that's how we build it. Uh, I, I can tell you from the software world, and I, I came from the gaming world, where, where, you know, where a lot of this stuff is, is from, which is... Right, I have to... Uh, Mark, we have to take a quick break. We have David in Framingham who wants oh, to okay. talk to you, and so do I. Sure. We'll continue here. It's Mark Sargent, Flat Earth Theor Theorist. And he does have videos, Flat Earth Theory, that you can Google and find them on YouTube. It's WBZ News Radio 1030, 617 254 1030. Snow. Waves can fall heavy at times, accumulating 6 to 10, 4 tapering out by early evening hours. Winds up to 40 miles per hour, creating near blizzard conditions with poor visibility, blowing snow, and difficult travel. I, 32 degrees. And remember, people, your SUV may allow you to go forward fast, faster, but it does not allow you to stop faster. So don't be a, an SUV cowboy, okay? Because we all know. When you find a car up ahead in the ditch, it's going to be an SUV. 617-254-1030. We have Mark Sargent. He's a flat earth theorist. And he started out quite well. We have uh, David in Framingham. Who has a question for Mark. I have a bunch of questions, too. David in Framingham, how are you? You're on WBZ. Hey, good evening, sir. So on a small issue, how would you explain that bright thing I see going over my sky at 17,000 miles an hour every couple of nights that we call the ISS. And then on the bigger side, how would you, you know, argue against things like gravity wells and astrophysics? Okay, we'll do the first one first. When it comes to the ISS, I'm not saying there isn't anything up there. Can, can you hear me or is that an echo? That's okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. The, I'm not saying that there isn't anything up there. What I'm saying is whatever's up there doesn't have people on it. And by that, I mean, if you look at any of the interior ISS footage, I mean interior, not exterior, you will come to the same conclusion. It's like, okay, why in the world are they faking the interior shots? They're only faking them because they can't put people up there. Same thing with satellites. Now, is there something up there? Absolutely. Do I think a lot of it is us? Not a chance. Uh, I, if ever any doubted that, go pick up a decent pair of night vision binoculars from Amazon and it'll change your world. Look up there and tell me what you see. I watch... Okay, what's making it go in a circle? I, we'll, we'll use the Magellan experiment, the same thing. Did Magellan make a trip around the world or did he just move around like a finger on a dinner plate? Just because you go around in a circle doesn't mean it's a sphere. It could also mean that it's flat and that's what I'm holding to. So basically, it could be just circling up. around like a, in a boat on a circular pond, rather than going around a globe. Exactly, exactly. If the if the circle is big enough, you're not going to know. You're just going to make it a see, very though, as it went off circularly in the distance. Couldn't you kind of see that happen rather than disappear, kind of? No, so because you heard my question, sir, sir, sir. You heard my question though. That thing is 250 miles up, give or take, and yeah. the Earth is you know 20, you know, thousand miles across. Sure. How Wait. You do math? <laughs> Again, you do the there, math? there's you there's do some math? there's something up there. Could it be part? Look, you want to have some fun? Look up the the high altitude balloon program from NASA that they've been running since the fifties. There's something up there, no question. Yeah, but that but, but, that, but that, that that's up to a hundred thousand feet. Yes. I'm not sure your point, David. We he did address. Yeah, what do you see yeah, up there? I don't buy it. it could be, I, I don't, it could yeah, be I don't a, a thing that's man-made that 
circles rather than goes around. Yeah. Mm. Nah. Okay, okay, wait, wait, before he, before he goes, let me throw something at you, okay, because I had a scientist gravity throw, was, gravity I, I, the, the gravity was, of course, when you are in a planetarium, and you were looking up in the sky, and you were looking up at the moons of Jupiter, let's say you bring a pair of binoculars to, you know, to the planetarium, and you say, do those binoculars make the moons of Jupiter more or less spherical, and you're going to say, well, it doesn't matter, because I'm in a planetarium, duh, I'm going, okay, who's to say when you don't walk outside of that planetarium, you're just not in a bigger one? Who's, who's saying? The only okay, person how, that's... How about, how, okay, how about this one? How about the shape of the moon and how shadows cast against it as we view it from the surface of the Earth? Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Uh, you can't do that in a planetarium. You can go down to Hayden Planetarium. He'll do that all day long. Not only that, he'll show you a blood moon. He'll put your face on the moon, write your name in stars if you want. You can do anything in the sky. Someone here on Earth is, is, is fabricating the moon? No, not at all. I'm not saying that we have anything to do with it. I'm saying this was made a long time before we got here. I'm saying that we j all we did was help keep the secret. I'm just saying the United States and the Soviet Union figured it out in the 1950s when they went out to Antarctica, which is a whole other thing. And when they figured it out, it's like, you know uh, what? Uh, all right, sir. All right, sir. Who, who David, you can't be interrupting like that. I have a question for you. Shoot. When I go to the telescope, I look at Saturn. Yep. It's round. Yep. Okay. Why why would Earth be the only flat planet? Is there all these other planets around? What would be it seems unlikely that out of all of them the one the one we have to live on would be flat. Just because you see just because everything else in the sky is a sphere doesn't mean you're a sphere. That's true. I, I, it would I, just I, seem weird. Well, to have is it the is only it one that we're on be flat? What would, that doesn't is follow it, anything. Is it is it weird or is it part of a bigger picture? Meaning, if the people that built this place and and I talked about this in the in the flat Earth clues about, about the it goes down to the motivation and that is animal. You go to any wildlife preserve. When you go to a wildlife preserve, you can put any other animal in that preserve. Let's say it's a thousand acre preserve, right? Yeah. They won't care that there's a fence there on the edge. Human beings, however, are very unique from that standpoint, meaning they, they could be the most beautiful wildlife reserve ever created. But human beings, all they'll care about is right. the fence. Who built the fence? Why, 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 should we pay homage to the fence? Why have the, we angered the people that made the fence? You have okay. to. You for have the purposes to, of our discussion, since it's so wide ranging, yeah. we can talk about the earth being flat, or we can talk about the earth being flat inside of a Truman Show like domey kind of thing. There you we go. We can go into gravity and why, whether or not that's real. But we have a limited time, so let's keep us close to Earth is flat and the stuff that's most germane to Earth is flat. Okay, okay. And now, next question. If it's flat, how come no one's tried to go to the edge? They have tried to go to the edge. As a matter of fact, that's where it gets. That's, how, that's what led me down this path was that when I was doing the, you know, looking at every other conspiracy, and I was getting bored because it's like how many different things can I, uh, you know, can I look at? I started looking into the hollow earth thing. As a hollow earth, that's pretty interesting, you know, that, that the earth is actually a sphere, but it's hollow and, you know, journey to the center of the earth type stuff. And then I started looking into that and it got me to a guy named Richard Byrd, Richard E. Byrd, as a matter of fact, the, the youngest admiral to ever be in the United States Navy, the greatest explorer really of all time, and the, at least the, the uh, very least the greatest American explorer, went to the, to the North Pole in 1926 and then for whatever reason they rerouted rickety planes in 1926 rerouted him to the south pole and from 1928 until his death in 1957 that's all he did was antarctica for be the better part of 30 years he just flew mission after mission after mission down to the south pole took a break during world war ii and of course the only people that were doing any exploration work down in antarctica in world war ii were the nazis interesting story for another time and he goes on television. You guys can look. What's great is the, the footage that's out there on YouTube. He, he actually did an interview in 1954 during his, after his last miss, mission in Antarctica. And he comes back and he goes on. It was, uh, the show was called The Long Jeans Chronoscope. And it was like the 60 minutes of its day, 1954. And he goes on. He goes, you know what? Antarctica is just made out of money. He goes, there's a mountain range made out of coal that could power the whole world. There's uranium, there's minerals, there's petroleum, you name it, it's down there. Everyone's down there already. You know, the Russian, Great Britain, Argentina, New Zealand, Australia, all, you know, a bunch of different nations are down there. We're going down for another mission in 1955, 1956 called Operation Deep Freeze. And we're, you know, it, it could be a question of how we're going to fight over the resources. 
<clears throat> and then during that mission in 1955 and 56, something happened. We're still trying to figure out what it is, but something they found something that was so big that everyone left the ice at the same time. Literally everyone left. All the countries, especially countries that, that were trying to rebuild after World War II, like the Soviet Union and Great Britain, they left as well. And all, all, almost immediately, they put started building the Antarctic Treaty, which was ratified in 1959 officially, the same year the, the Van Allen Radiation Belt was announced, you know, sealing off the upper edge and the outer edge. The Antarctic Treaty is the longest treaty of its kind. It's never been broken. It's, it, it's, it's unparalleled in its scope. No nation anywhere in the world, no matter how much money, no matter how much influence you have, none of their corporations are allowed to go down there ever. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to get to the answer to the question. Sure. Oh, the has edge. anyone gone, has anyone gone to the edge? edge? Yeah, they, yeah, they did. They got there, and whatever I believe the Admiral Byrd found it, and the, everyone else recognized it. They chased everybody off the ice, and now Antarctica is a no-man's land. Nobody can go down there. Period. Right. What I, why is it that if the Earth is flat, if you keep going in one direction, you come back to the same spot? Like, oh, because because if it's a if it's a, you mean or, if you get an if airplane, you go yeah. in one direction, you're gonna end up back pretty much where you started. Oh, because GPS is gonna is gonna send you there. GPS will turn you in a giant big circle like a finger on a dinner plate. GPS, which was designed in the mid '90s by who? The United States Department of Defense. They, okay. they, they're the ones that will turn you. You okay. cannot use GPS to. All right, good answer. Yeah. Uh, so, if it's, it's not all that big, like it's easily the edge is easily reachable because you're saying the edge is somewhere down by the uh, Antarctic. Yeah, yeah. So, how big is this thing? It's, the the dome it's, or the the structure itself it's huge. Yeah. What if it's, you just went straight though? If you went straight, if you went straight, and and you ignored GPS. Not going in a big circle. Okay. Let's let's say let's say you were rich and you had access to a triple seven, fully fueled with with extended fuel tanks. Yeah. If you tried to get to Antarctica before you know, if you tried to breach Antarctica, you know, without using GPS. First of all, the treaty wouldn't even allow you to, to do it. You'd, you'd have to get clearance, which you're not going to okay, get. Okay, say we got clearance. Okay, let's say you got clearance. Eventually, you'd run into the Antarctic Defense Force. You'd still, you know, you're saying, okay, we, we, we still got clearance to get past those guys, the multinational Navy that protects Antarctica. I don't know what they're protecting. There's only thing down there are two types of penguins. But if you could get past all that, eventually you're going to run into the same thing Bird is, did, which was thousands of miles of frozen wasteland, which he said on, on the thing. He goes, look, there's thousands of miles past the South Pole, which we haven't even seen, which I haven't even seen. Eventually, we believe that you're going to run into some sort of barrier. Now, what's the barrier made out of? You know, it's, it's not an edge that goes off into space. It's not a, it's not a, a, a high. It's, what it's made out of, who knows? You know, is it a heavy element? Is it a frequency? Is it a force field? We don't know. But it was big enough and obvious enough that they couldn't take any chances of any corporation going down. And, you know, petroleum companies, they have the backstage pass to anything. You can't tell me that the, the head of, of Exxon can't so – you not only are you not – let's say you were the president of Exxon. Not only are you not allowed to go down there, and it's not even up for debate until 2041. Yeah. You're not even allowed to talk about it. All right. We do have some calls to get to. Greg, Josh, Greg, you've been there a while. This is going to be like a super short break, and we'll get right to the calls. Thanks. <laughs> it's WBZ, News Radio. Now, what do you say? I look forward to your next syllable with great eagerness. Jay Talking with Bradley James. You're listening to WBZ News Radio 1030. Jay Talking, Bradley J. WBZ News Radio 1030. Hey, this is WBZ News Radio 1030. Mark Sargent, Flat Earth, Earth Theorist. And he's very interesting. <laughs> we have Greg in L.A. with a question for Mark. How are you doing? Greg, say hi to Mark and, and, and go for it. Uh, hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. Hey, Bradley. Yes, Greg. Uh, yeah, here. You know, I like the music that you're playing in between. Just want to show that in. Thanks. But I had a question for Mark. So I've heard about this subject and looked into it a little bit. And... I had some questions, and one of them is the so-called pendulum. Okay. You familiar with that? 
Yep. Yep. Okay, so if the so-called pendulum is supposed to prove that the Earth is spinning. I couldn't understand. It's the what? The, the, fo the, so the so-called pendulum. And that is, again, look, look up some, some YouTube videos on this. Again, I'm not also saying that gravity doesn't exist. That's a, that's a common misconception. Uh, gravity, but at the same time, gravity is easily, easily simulated. Easily. Okay. So explain what this pendulum thing is and how it plays if, into your theories. Okay. The pendulum, if you swing it, what they're talking about is a giant pendulum that if you had, if you created like a, like a clock with dominoes and on the second hands and let the pendulum go, the theory is the spinning of the earth will eventually start knocking down pendulums because the earth is spinning. Knocking down dominoes. Do yeah, sorry. Sorry. Right. Knocking down dominoes because the right, earth right. is spinning. And that is, that is just not the case. But even if it was, it, for me, it's never going to be the silver bullet because science can't explain gravity as we know it. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson will come on and say, look, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. Yeah, that's right. Now, Einstein well, tried all his life for a unifying theory of gravity and failed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, Greg, anything else? Yeah, so uh, my question was, how would it work if it wasn't on the north of the South Pole? Because if you look at the locations, where there's hundreds of so-called pendulums across the world. Yeah. And they're primarily around the equator. So if, if the Earth was spinning on its poles, how would that tell you that the Earth is rotating? That's a good question. Don't know. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. I'll, 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 let me but throw one back. A flat Earth can spin. Yeah. What's yeah. that? A flat well, Earth could spin. Well, well let, me, let me throw one more at you, and that is, uh, sorry, two quick ones. The Michelson-Moreland experiment and Aries failure where they looked for, this was back in the day, when they were looking for supposedly the, the cosmic wind, the ether that's out there, and they both couldn't find it. And Aries failure, which I, I still think is one of the most quotable things for our, our cause, which he said that, he goes, either I failed or the earth isn't moving. And since the rest of science says, well, we all know the earth is moving, then we must have failed. Yeah. Anyway. Great, thanks a lot. The pendulum, we, we dealt with the pendulum question, 617-254-1030. Flat Earth, take your shot here. We have, uh, oh, by the way, any idea why at the edges of the flat Earth yeah, yeah. it's cold and icy? I'm sorry, why, the, uh, why the way? At, if you go to, you say the edge of the Earth, the edge, the edge of the, of the flat Earth. Earth is down in the Antarctica and it's cold down there. Yeah. Why would that be? Why would it be cold? Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's one of my favorite parts. That's just part of the negative reinforcement system of this, how this place was built. And that is you've got just the – when you go out there, when you, when you head towards the outer edge, it gets colder and colder until you get icebergs. And then if you're still brave enough to go – remember, most of the time up until very, very recently, we only had wooden ships. You get to Antarctica. The entire Antarctic coastline is so unique. It's a 200-foot sheer wall of ice – and if you can get on top of it, then the altitude of that thing starts going up and up and up to about two miles. It's mostly a plateau no matter where you are. You know, altitude sickness kicks so in. So the short answer is whoever made the flat earth made it cold at the edges so people wouldn't go there. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great, that, it's a great tool. It's predicated on a much more difficult to believe thing that some, some beings designed this solar system and put it under a big cake dish or whatever and no. and we're a snow globe within a aquarium within a bigger snow globe or something like that sure which is a, another whole thing yeah. so the reason it's cold at the end is because it's at the edges is, is to discourage people from going there yeah oh yeah, yeah. the the antarctica just screams go away there's no I, indigenous there's, sorry I go have ahead more problem i think i have more problem with the somebody made this whole thing than well, the earth being flat and well, my number I, one most difficult thing <coughs> is, as you look out, you see a bunch of round stuff, yeah. the notion that somehow our planet is the only one that's flat. That's the thing that gets me. It's, Out of all the spheres you see, the billions and billions and billions, ours would be the only flat one. Well, again, if you're... Could happen, sure, it could happen, but it makes uh, oh, it... Oh, how many... How many in the Northeast, wicked unlikely. How, how many un, how many un illusions do we fall for on a daily basis? If you're inside a planetarium, and I'm going to use that every once in a while, if you're in a, a planetarium on your back, 
Are you looking at the night sky sometime in the winter or the fall, whenever they have it set? You know, is the blood moon up there? You know, no, it's not. But that's what you see. The line from The Truman Show is, is quite poetic, which is we believe, we accept the world that is presented to us. All right, uh, let's go to Sean in Dorchester. Sean, how you doing? Hi, how's it going? Uh, I'm Sean. I'm from Boston, and I uh, just had a question for Mark. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, that's kind of about his model, because um, I've seen a little bit of this. Um, I know it's kind of the, uh, you know, it's basically the U.N. flag map, you know, flat, I guess, right, with, with, with uh, you know, the circle of the Antarctic around us, like a dinner plate, I guess, right? Yep, that's exactly that's exactly what it looks like. Uh, if you, yeah, if, and then maybe, maybe, maybe it goes on beyond that, who knows how far, who, you know, who cares, but, uh, you know, that's the main thing of it, I guess, but, like, what, how come, I guess, how come we can't see the sun, uh, you know, or the whole, all, all that. Right, well, how do you account for the day night? Bro, the good. Day, night is, it, is it too it, small? Is it is it too small and just too low? Or I don't, like what, is, like you know, vanishing point or something? I, I, I don't understand that. There. Got, no, I got you. I got you. That's an that's an excellent question because we you know I should probably do the model real quick and that is if the world is a dinner plate, what does it look like? It looks like the UN flag. The UN flag is almost an exact representation of what we're talking about here. Although what's really interesting is there's something missing th from the UN flag, and that's Antarctica. Instead of Antarctica, you've got these giant wreaths around the UN flag. But when it comes to the sun and the moon, which are so interesting, the sun and the moon would have to be much smaller and much, much closer to us. They'd be like a, like a mobile over a child's crib. So they would be maybe, I don't know, less than a few thousand miles up, but they would be very, very small, less than 50 miles wide, which would mean the sun is probably a directional light source. It's not an omnidirectional like a, light source. Like a needle on a record player or something. There you go. There you go. And which would oh. account, which account also accounts for the seasons because the sun and the moon wouldn't travel in the same path. It would be split very different, like a needle on an old record player oh. where, where it kind of moves in and moves out. And it would also mean that the sun and the moon are completely independent from each other. The sun isn't, re the moon isn't reflecting anything from the sun, and those moonlight experiments still spook me out. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what's going on there, where the moon is generally generating a cold light with up to a 13 degree swing, uh, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, why the the the, the, the where 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 moonlight is actually colder than moonshade by up to 13 degrees it's fascinating watching those videos watching those tests be done and when you magnify take a magnifying glass to moonlight that it actually becomes colder that just defies everything like, yeah we we can simulate it with with, like, with blue like lasers burning ants, like burning ants but like like freezing ants or whatever instead. yeah 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 so you could burn an ant with a sunlight but you can free well not freeze an ant with moonlight but you can get it pretty cold and i again does that prove it's a flat earth no but it really puts into question what the hell we've been told about the the moon reflecting the sun's rays which of Sean course it could have to go and mark yeah, uh, we do have a couple more people, and I have a couple more questions. I don't know. Would you be re willing to sit through the the news and do it? Yeah, more? yeah. How much? How much time? I don't. Uh, it'll take seven minutes. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure, it's Mark Sargent, full flat Earth theorist. You can get into more detail with uh, his videos. You can Google them. Flat Earth theory. Let me see. Uh, flat Earth clues, right? Yes, flat Earth flat clues. Earth All clues. you have to do is any search engine. Flat Earth clues. You can't miss it. Okay. And uh, this is one that I'm sure you deal with all the time, and so it should be no problem. What? And that is, when there's eclipse, how come the shadow's not flat, straight? You know, why is there a roundy shadow in an eclipse? Don't mm. answer that yet. We're going to figure that out after this. Uh, after this break, we'll get some okay. news, and everybody can get a beverage and recharge, and we'll continue in uh, after the news. Six one seven two five four ten thirty. And Mark, so you yeah. know, this will be a podcast if you. Uh, sign up for the J Talking podcast. You'll be able to share this whole segment with your friends or, or at groups. It's WBZ. Go cool. with WBZ Saturday, February 11th at 1. It's WBZ, Family J. 31 degrees here. And usually it's a little warmer here. That means it's probably colder where many of you are and misty. So could be very dangerous and slippery. Could be black guys. 617 254 1030. 617 254 1030. Mark Sargent is a flat earth theorist, and he started out very thoroughly. We have Josh in Groton. Uh, Mark says the earth is flat, and it's, it's intriguing, and of course gives rise to many questions, which we are asking. And it's Josh in Groton now. 
Thanks for staying, Mark. And Josh, you too. How you doing? All right, Bradley. How you doing? Good. So this whole uh, theory of the flat earth reminds me of your days back at BCN and your Michigan show. Um, and the reason I say that is, is Mark gave an explanation about what he thought occurs down in Antarctica and why you can't go down there, and that's the end of the Earth, where it ends. So let's look at the Earth this way. Let's just say it's a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. If you go to either side, there's an edge, meaning there's four edges. Mark, how do you account for the other three edges? Oh, perfect. I, I was actually glad somebody brought that up. Oh, yeah, if you go towards California, it's not cold at that edge. No, 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 no. He's wondering where the physical edges are. And what I mean is that Antarctica, in the Flat Earth map, Antarctica is the only continent that looks nothing like everything else. All the other continents look, look pretty much normal. But Antarctica, instead of being a continent sort of like an island continent like Australia, is actually just a giant circular coastline that surrounds the entire thing. Completely you around. have a circular coastline that surrounds oh, so essentially a four flat, by eight sheet of plywood. Disc. You think it's, it's like a flat disc, right? Now. Well, yeah, yeah. If it if it's if it's a uh, if it's a snow globe type situation, there's got to be an edge. And I mean, yeah, technically, I suppose you could have Antarctica as a continent, but you're still going to have to have an edge. And in this case, from what we've seen, Antarctica is the edge on all sides. It's not it's not an island. It's just this big circular ring. It's this giant plateau of ice that encompasses us. But if you go all the way around the west, let me, let me just follow that through. Yep. So theoretically, if you headed from Boston south and you went to Antarctica, Yep. That's what I thought you were saying was one edge. But let's just say you go east to west along the equator. You never it's, hit the Antarctica area. So how do you account for that edge? No, no, no. It's always Antarctica. It's the same coastline. It's the same body of land, no matter which way you go. The Ant Antarctica is not is not circular. It's not an island. But if you go the, west, you're never going to hit Antarctica. You're just going to keep going west. That's what I think. No, 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 no. There's, there's, if there's an edge on all sides, it doesn't matter which way your compass points. You're always going to hit an edge somewhere, and the edge is always the same yeah, thing. Nobody's ever hit the edge going. Nobody's ever hit the edge. The Antarctica edge going west. No, 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 <laughs> no. The edge is, the edge is everywhere. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you go west, it doesn't matter. North, south, east, or west, you're going to run into the Antarctic coastline. Nobody's ever done that ever. If, Can I if just it, ask a, a, one more question? Do yeah. you believe in the theory of magnetivity in a compass? Sure. Okay, so let's just say you head west. If you head west, you would circumnavigate the globe, assuming it's round. But if you followed your theory and you head west, you're going to hit Antarctica. But you're not if you head true west all the time. The compass... That's one thing I don't get, uh, Mark. Yes. If you go, you talk about Antarctica being the west, I mean the edge, and you're kind of saying that it, it's an edge that rims all the way around the That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly thing. what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And the compass. But nobody's ever gone there. Like, you can't do it. Go west. I kind of get what Mike's, what uh, Josh uh, I, I get what, I always get, no, no, somebody's gone there, but the average person isn't going to go. Uh, Captain Cook, I believe, tried to circumnavigate Antarctica. It took him what, three years, and he never actually found a part of the coastline that he could get into. It took him just, way longer than he should. I don't, I don't hear you address it, though. What happens if you just keep going west? Why don't you ever run into this this Antarctic edge that you, you, you if No matter which direction you go, you're going to run into the anti... It, if, okay, if the middle, if the middle of this thing is a dinner plate... The North Pole is literally the center of the dinner plate, which means your compass is always going to point towards the center of the dinner plate, no matter what. So you, in your model, the edge is in the middle. The the edge. Okay. Again, <laughs> the think of the think of the UN flag. All right, the UN flag is circular, but it's flat. The center of the UN flag is the North Pole, and the entire outer ring of that thing that's Antarctica. So no matter which way you go, no matter which way, you, how you're using your compass, your GPS system, you go off the GPS system, eventually you're going to run into a body of land. That body of land is always Antarctica. Okay, but people, like people in planes go west, 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 west. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But I mean, you're, but, you're, but, 
but if you're following the GPS system, it's again it's the Magellan argument, and that is the GPS system is still going to you know do, do the whole. Th- uh, finger on a dinner plate. Well, even if you don't use a G- the, even, even if you don't, don't use, use GPS. GPS, if you don't use GPS, you're going to run into a landmass. Yes, it, the the landmass is the giant is a giant ring of landmass around the entire thing. It is Antarctica. All right, Josh. I think you had a good question there. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Gus. Yeah, six one seven two five four ten thirty. Oh, so how if you're this flat, how thick is it? Ah, <laughs> good. That's an excellent question because how how thick is the globe? If you believe in mainstream science, it's 4,000 miles thick, but the deepest hole ever drilled, I ever thought it was drilled. 8,000 miles, but that's, you know. Academic. Well, no, it's 4,000 4, 4, miles to the center, right. but 8,000 miles all the way through. Yeah. But the deepest hole ever drilled is 8 miles, period. No one's ever drilled right. deeper than 8 miles. So, but yet, when you open up any mainstream science book, they're going to show, oh, here's the red band, orange band, yellow band, white band. I'm it's just like, curious they, well, as to, if you had a theory about how, it, how if, it might be. If, if I had to t- and I've, I've said this in other things, if I had to take a guess, eh, maybe a couple hundred miles, but it doesn't have to be very thick because, again, the negative reinforcement. Once you get down past eight miles, your drill bits don't work anymore. So, okay. So what if you get – I mean, there's no nothing really – going back to the Antarctica, keeping you from going to the edge, then going – and then, you know, repelling down the edge for 200 miles to see if you can see the other side. Really no, 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 it's no, no, it's not – no, no, it's not – no, no, it's not that easy. You when you when you get when you get to the Antarctic coastline, yeah. And by the way, you can book trips to Antarctica right now. It costs you about ten, fifteen thousand dollars. But when you get there, uh, yeah. For, first of all, the, the the coastline, just the coastline, is two hundred feet straight up. But once you get on top of it, once you actually get into Antarctica, it plateaus out again, two miles high, and then it's thousands of miles inland. We okay, don't know how. So, okay, just theoretically though, I'm asking you the question. Yeah. You go up two miles and then you go thousands of miles. You could at some point get to the edge because yes, there's an edge. Yeah, yeah. I, could, the, I, I, it seems as yeah. though that that it would be worthwhile to to find the edge of the earth. Oh, sure. And so you could once you get to the edge, go over the edge and can go down, 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 down until you get to the other side. Well, that's just it. What's then you get into the the whole argument and that is what's outside of it. If it is a snow globe, what's on the other side of it? And you know, I try to tell people, I was like, look, try to live one world at a time. Otherwise, you can get into the Russian stacking okay. argument. The snow globe thing, I mean, a flat Earth necessarily has an other side. Yes. But what's, the, but what's on the other? Earth, what, you could find the other side if you wanted. If it were yes. Important. Yeah. If, if you had unlimited resources and unlimited access yeah, and you right, could. Just, yeah. Let's get on that right away. Let's All take right. a very quick break. And can you do one more segment? Sure. Thank you. Okay, right. it's WBZ News Radio 1030. We heard you on the radio. That's right. Now, say my name. All night, with Bradley J. Bradley J. Jay Tonkins, WBZ News Radio 1030. Did you know that in Greater Boston, nearly 70% of students are reading below grade level? Join Generations Incorporated, Greater Boston's host to AARP Foundation Experience Corps, to help change this statistic. As a nationally recognized literacy program, they bring experienced older adult volunteers with time and talent to help young readers grow in Boston and Revere. For more information on how you can address this literacy crisis, visit generationsinc.org or wbz.com slash wbzcares. It may be cold outside, but there's always fresh hot coffee and strong Irish tea to warm you up at Green Hills Bakery. Stop by Green Hills for their daily lunch special, featuring hot roast, served with homemade gravy, mashed potatoes, and vegetables. Or try delicious soups and specialty Guinness beef stew to keep you satisfied all day long. Green Hills also has you covered for all your dessert needs. Cakes, cookies, and cupcakes are available for all occasions. Eat in or take it to go. Open daily at 5 a.m. Green Hills Bakery.com. Please, will you just listen for a change? Here's a radio message. What's your name? Brad. We were talking about Bradley. Who are you? Who's the deep talking cat on midnight till dawn on BC? Bradley J. Can you dig it? Who's the cat that won't hang up when some call it won't shut up? Jay talking. Right on. They say this cat Brad is a bad mother. Well, I'm talking about Brad. WBZ News Radio 1030. For notification of upcoming Jay Talking guests and topics, follow Bradley Jay on Twitter at Jay Talking WBZ. Mark Sargent is a black earth theorist, and he's 
graciously stayed on because there's so much, so much interest and so many questions. First, remember the question I asked about <coughs> eclipses? What, why is the shadow curved? Oh, because the objects that are up there, the sun and the moon, they're actually physical objects. They're not, right. they're isn't, not part... Isn't, isn't there something that happens astronomically where the Earth is blocking the sunlight? Well, uh, the get, shadow on the, another again. object? Again, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you so get, why isn't that current? Well, that's just it. We can, it's going to go to the same argument, which is we can simulate, like, for example, a blood moon. We can simulate a blood moon now in a planetarium all day long. You know, it's it's not hard to do. Uh, same thing with the waxing and waning waning crescent. Some being which has taken a shadow that would naturally be straight edged and up there bending it to fool us. Sure. I keep. Yeah. I I, I mean, that, it, it may be a, a, that gives me a you know. Well, problem. I'm not saying. Go to Patrick in North Dakota. Patrick, hello. Hello, uh, thanks for having me on. I think the easiest way for a layman to uh, prove to themselves that the Earth is a sphere is you, you just Google the uh, star trails at the equator. You can see the curve coupled with the fact that we have two celestial poles. I mean, just by looking at the star trails, it's real easy for anyone Googling that. that you can see the, the curve, how it goes, especially at the equator. It's real noticeable. Can you say that again? I, I know, I know, I, I I know where he's going. He's saying that the star the star trails spin in different directions depending on what side of the equator you're on. And if you're on yeah. the equator, you can you can see time lapse of them one going clockwise, the other going counterclockwise. Right. Actually, same same argument applies there. And that is, look, if you can if you can fake a blood moon waxing and waning crescent, uh, star trails that's that's not hard at all. But I will follow it up with this because star trails are very very interesting, and we've been harping on this for the last six months. And that is, why do we not see any parallax scrolling with the star trails whatsoever? By that I mean, the closest star is about four light years away, but there's star trails that are out there thousands, if not millions of light years away, if you believe mainstream science. But yet, when we see I the time lapse... We do see, we do see parallax Patrick, scrolling. go ahead, speak up. You, you, wait, show, show, do, show me a movie with parallax. It's just can't. really small and hard to measure. You have to have a, a good instruments to measure the parallax scrolling. So, and this and this parallax wouldn't wouldn't change over thousands of years. The constellations wouldn't change their shape over thousands of years. Come on, that's a stretch. Okay, right, well, Patrick, I mean, we have some other people to get to. By the way, Patrick, okay, you're in the business, right? You work in the astronomy business, right? No, no, I've actually I I believed in the flat Earth. I got into people like Mark Sargent, and I followed him. I've been listening to both sides of the argument, and I found the best argument for uh, a spherical Earth. And that's in my opinion. That's what I just laid down for you guys. So anyone listening, you know, they don't have to go down this path of uh, misinformation. Thank you. How, wait, how did you find out that Pat, that he was going to be on? Oh, well, I heard from a friend. And and how do you know how they found out? Um, not really sure. They I think I know. Uh, You guys still there? Hello? Hello? I have Ken and Stoughton now. Hi, Ken. You're on with Mark Sargent for a few more minutes here. How are you doing? Hello. Ken, hi. Go ahead. Hey, Bradley. How are you doing? It's Good Ken. Day. Stoughton. Listen, um, I have a perfect uh, picture in my head of what uh, your guest is talking about for his model of the Earth. Essentially, it's a pizza where... The North Pole's in the middle, and Antarctica is at the edge. But I just want to let you know how ridiculous that is. Uh, <laughs> anyone who's ever traveled or been in an airplane or traveled, especially me, by a sailboat, knows exactly how the world works, and it doesn't work like a pizza. The, the distances between lines and longitude not continuously get larger as you head south. If so, the people who race like the Dendi Global Challenge and then three sailboats from England down to Antarctica, and they do a quick loop around Antarctica and back up again, because that's the shortest way to circle the Earth. If the Earth was shaped like a pizza, like Mark is reporting here, it would take them months and starve to death for the <laughs> circle of the Earth. Okay? It's, 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 it, you look up Ellen MacArthur, give her a call and have a conversation with her, and she'll tell you about how it is to circle the Earth. Um, it's simply not true that it's flat and shaped like a pizza. And if you believe that, that's fine. But I could say anything at this point to you, and it wouldn't matter. Say, I'm Doctor Who, I'm Captain Kirk, I'm here on a starship. Doesn't matter. 
And all you have to do is go on a boat, go down to Antarctica, circle the Earth, and you'll see how big it is. In fact, if you watch the TV show Whale Wars, they actually chased a Japanese whaling ship all the way around Antarctica and back to the other side. And the ships would all run out of fuel long before they'd be able to do that if Antarctica was the outside edge of a pizza, as you say. Ken, really good call. Really, really good. Let's uh, let uh do you, want me to, do you want me to address that? Yeah. Okay. Um, circumnavigating Antarctica. Find me a video where they document it. Tell me also why the planes aren't allowed to fly over it anymore. They supposedly were able to fly up over it up until the early 1970s. And now, even though it's the shortest distance between two points, why they're not allowed. And if we want to go to the pizza argument, tell me why when a plane anywhere in the southern hemisphere especially in the southern hemisphere any flight from south america to africa or australia any of those three places down there tell me when they get over water about 150 200 miles why gps drops them off they disappear you can look this up anywhere you want it goes into approximated or estimated mode and it never comes back until you're just about ready to land why isn't gps tracking everything it's a dod system with supposedly 30 satellites it should be blanket coverage it's not there and that's because they're hiding the routes Fair the routes aren't and, there uh, you can check out more in-depth uh, information from my flat earth clues google flat earth clues and we're going out to you know lots of the country so hopefully you'll get some traffic there we have <laughs> hopefully we have joe uh, in cambridge hi joe hey how are you good evening hi i have a two-part question number one uh, firstly uh what would the powers that be gain by keeping us all in the dark Motiva goes to motivation again. Can you remind me? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Mo motivation. Uh, three parts. One would be academically, the the entire academic structure would would have to be broken down and rebuilt from the ground up. It's too much chaos. Two, economically, uh, there's too many industries that are based on defense. If we are all part of a giant Truman Show slash snow globe, do you still go to war? Uh, do, do any does any defense department still operate? But the biggest one would have to be the, the spiritual side of things. I hate to say it, but you're asking science to take a big step backwards and admit when, to something. Why couldn't it exist? Why well, it, it could be a motivation. I mean, this it, designer snow globe maker the, of which you speak could be God. Well, yeah, I mean, it's possible or at least the next step to God, you know, an advanced civilization could do it. I mean, we we're we're aspiring to do the same thing now. But it, when you get that far, there's when it, when an institution like science builds a model for 500 years, it, you can't backtrack from it. The, the The argument I've been throwing at people is, look, if science figured out they were, were wrong, would they tell you? No, they would not. Look at the end of the first Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. What happened to the Ark at the end? It was put into a crate, put into a warehouse, and you never saw it again because it went against science. Science if someone discovered that the Earth were actually flat, wouldn't they, yeah. wouldn't they um, become the most famous person ever and super rich? And why wouldn't they want to? Bradley, that, that was my next question. I want to know what you personally gained from this because... It seems like a very lonely life that you live. That you're fighting this argument, and you're oh, not, hey, you're I, constantly contrarian. I d this. hey, I don't, I don't mind the arguments. Believe me, I tried. I, I was a big. I used to collect antique globes. That was one of the things I collected. What a monetary game. What are you gonna get? What, what are you gonna do with this? You, you're just preaching. Yeah, no, I don't not, know why you fight this fight. What is oh, why, why I fight this fight? Because it has the potential to. It's the only conspiracy I've even could even comprehend that could bring about some sort of positive change to the world because if we are part of an enclosed system if we are part of a giant truman show all one big family then a lot of our it's the old reagan speech from the 1980s all our internal squabbles those go away and then we have we become unified in a way that we've never been before that's my goal you know uh, people go to the mount everest is super hard it can't be any harder to get to the end of Antarctica. I would think you yourself, Mark, would put up an expedition and discover the edge of the Earth, and then you would be the man. You'd be <laughs> the new, it, I don't know. It, 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 it's a nice thought, but this place has been protected since 1959. Nobody's, nobody's going to do anything down there. Again, you can have your picture taken, but 
it's it's subtle because you can't put up signs saying don't go here they just nudge you in a direction to basically make it uh, an unpleasant place to go all right joe thanks a lot good points i have time one more call super short question then carl i'll take douglas then carl and paul uh after mark leaves can ask me a question and i I'll either go, uh-huh, uh-huh, or answer it as I think Mark probably would. Uh, Mark Douglas, how you doing? Hi, good, thanks. How are you, Doug? Yeah, we're in a short time. Okay, so I'm looking at the map. On the, on, I Google it. Um, and so I see, I totally see that, that pizza model. And I see how if the needle points north, that indeed, if you went west, which would be like 90 degrees perpendicular north, you would indeed go around in Magellan circles. I see that. But, yep. And indeed, the circles are tight the farther north you are. They're, they get bigger and bigger as you head to the equator. Yes. But that's where it breaks down. If you keep going south of the equator, if it's a pizza model, the circles should keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But if it's a spherical model, they should get smaller and smaller again as you approach the south pole or if it, you know, in a spherical model. So that, you know, forget the GPS thing. If you just took your compass and headed west, the circles should be huge out there, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be. You know, if you flew a plane west, um, dictated by a compass, it would be tight circles, like you're at near the south pole. All right, that's a good, you know, well pl well said, very concise. What? Gotcha. That's a, you got a 30 second answer for that, Mark? Um, yeah, ha I, I'll change directions on them, and that is find any flight that's connecting from Africa to South America to Australia, anything in there, and tell me how many nonstop flights you find from anywhere to anywhere in the south, uh, in the in the southern hemisphere. And tell me where the connections go. Don't tell me where the nonstops are. Tell me where the connections go, and then look where the connections go on a flat map. That'll answer part of your question. All right. Really appreciate that. If at the very least, a really excellent mental exercise. At the very most, you know, a, a new worldview. Mark Sargent, you put a lot of work into this for certain flat Earth theorists, and you can. Is there anything else you'd like them to see besides Googling flat Earth Q clues, flat Earth clues? Um, yeah, you want to have fun. Again, don't just follow my stuff. The community has gotten huge. Again, you can go in any search engine, type in Earth is or the Earth is. It's changed now to flat. We did that in the last year. Go into YouTube, just type in flat Earth. Don't even type in flat Earth clues. Type in flat Earth and search by upload date and tell me what you see and compare it against mainstream topics. This thing right. is way bigger than it should be, and I'm just humbled to be a part of it. Also, there, if you go to Facebook and under groups, type in Flat Earth, there's, there are a number of societies. One of them has 30,000 members, which is pretty big. Yeah. I really appreciate the time and, uh, you know, the, the way you handled yourself during the whole thing. Mark Sargent, oh. come back sometime. All right, hey. News Radio, and there's the, always the, the podcast. Search J Talking Mark, J-A-Y Talking, and this will be polished up by producer Mark as a podcast for you to share. Same with everybody. Thanks a lot, Mark. W Thanks very much for having me. Radio 1030. Hang in there, Carl and Paul. CBS News Update with the Justice Department.